There's a reason the University of Arkansas is one of the nation's fastest growing universities. Many reasons, actually. The Razorback family is a big one and a welcoming one. And like all families, the University of Arkansas has tradition, pride, and ties that bind, including one of the most recognizable cheers in all of sports. And with 45 national championships in multiple sports, there's plenty to celebrate. The university's history goes back to 1871, and the sidewalks prove it. Part of one of the most unique traditions found on any campus, Senior Walk. A series of sidewalks several miles in length that includes the names of more than 180,000 U of A graduates. Our family's first person to graduate from the U of A was Alice Polson. She graduated in 1888, and after she graduated, she went into a career of teaching. My grandmother was a teacher, my mom was a teacher, and myself, I'm a teacher. Actually, I'm a fourth generation teacher and U of A grad. At the university, it has a special place in my heart. That walk does too. I just remember growing up as a, uh, little girl uh, walk coming to the campus and looking for my dad's name and always loved it in the fall you know with the leaves going over it i usually make a yearly tradition to go to the very first one in 1888 so and i made sure every year my child goes with me i take her every single year because my mom did that with me i talked to her about family and tradition and what it means to us to be part of the university of arkansas that it is such an important part of our family and our history and hopefully I'll instill that enough to where she'll be part of the Razorback family. Razorback spirit didn't just happen, it developed over time. When the university needed a fight song more than 100 years ago, a student teamed up with a professor to create a tune and lyrics that grow more popular with each generation. My favorite part of the fight song would definitely have to be the lyrics, just because you know, it reminds us that Arkansas, we never yield. It's actually a really simple song. It was written by a student at the university uh, by the name of William Douglas. He was a, an engineering student, but he was also a member of the university orchestra. Our fight song was first played by the cadet band that eventually became the Razorback Marching Band. The fight song brings us together as a family, as a unit, and inspires us to do better. I always like to hear it at the end of the game, because we've got a happy, happy locker room. That means we won the game. Everybody's excited, happy, and that's what that's whenever you play it. It just uh, uh, elicits that sort of emotion. For thousands and thousands and thousands of students and alumni and fans, it is the rallying cry. The Razorback Marching Band adds so much to the atmosphere at games, but few fans realize how much work is involved. Band members report long before school starts, practicing into the season so that everyone can enjoy the best in sight and sound. It takes a lot to work together, from each person being where they're supposed to be, and then to get everyone to play what they're supposed to play. It's a lot of teamwork. For band camp, we rehearse basically all day. On the first day, it's a lot of logistics. Then to make sure everyone's instrument fits correctly. So we go over all the basics. So we go over the fight song. So we have pregame music, we have music we play in the stands, and then we actually have the halftime music. It's a lot of memorizing as you go and learning and just trying to get it on the fly as best as you can. When I was standing at this spot as a freshman, um, I was pretty nervous. First time that everyone steps on the field, I'm hoping that everyone will remember their part. The drum line goes on the field first, and then the band follows behind you and that crowd just rolls. And you just have to stay focused, not get too overwhelmed by all the 70,000 people cheering. We have cards that are printed off and given to each person in the band that tells them exactly where to be on the field. And that's what forms what formations that we make. To be in that A and hear the crowd just roar is really cool. It just makes you want to play that much louder. And I'm getting goosebumps speaking of it just right now. We can't play for them, but we try to support them as big as we can. Razorback spirit squads add to the game day experience and can sometimes be inspiring themselves. Patience Beard is a great example. 
a Razorback cheerleader who's gained attention around the world. She's the cheerleader with the prosthetic leg. It's the result of a birth defect, something that she never let slow her down. I had it amputated when I was nine months old. Um, got fitted for my first prosthesis when I was 13 months old. I learned to walk with a prosthetic leg, so my whole life I've just had it and I can't even tell you what it's like to have two legs, so. <laughs> she credits her parents for encouraging her to be active. She fell in love with cheerleading in middle school and the Texarkana, Texas native fell in love with the University of Arkansas on her first visit to campus. When she tried out for the Spirit Squad, she scored in the top five of 50 candidates. She is a skilled cheerleader, skilled athlete, and I can guarantee you this, no one can ever tell her not to do something, because she will do it, and she'll probably be the best at it. She has the technical ability, she has the enthusiasm. She exemplifies what a Razorback cheerleader is all about. I don't know how to describe it. She's just kind of like a light to other people. You have to work hard, and I want to show people that whatever you want to set your mind to, that work is what you have to do. You have to put out work to get in a reward. I chose communications for my major because, one, I love to talk, and I would love to be an inspirational speaker. So I thought that that would help me to just more and gain the courage to talk in front of people. Her work as a cheerleader, as a student, and as a person are all moving her toward her goal. She knows her story can make a difference. Now I do just want to get my story out and just show the world that like, you can do what you want, no matter what your circumstances are. A university as exceptional as its location, where the world comes to do business to be inspired in unexpected ways. A place made for adventure, discovery, and growth. Our strength lies in our spirit, and our calling is to greatness. The University of Arkansas. Students at the University of Arkansas represent every county in Arkansas, all 50 states, and more than 120 countries. It's a great place to spend your college years. In fact, Fayetteville was recently ranked the third best place to live in the U.S. The U of A is among the top 2% of the nation's public research universities. With 10 colleges and schools offering more than 200 academic programs where teaching and learning lead to discovery. The U of A is one of the nation's fastest growing universities, and that growth has resulted in an amazing transformation of campus with new and updated facilities and amenities. Hundreds of millions of dollars worth of improvements in the last few years alone, including new residence halls, a permanent home for the Honors College, the Faulkner Performing Arts Center, and an enhanced home for the Faye Jones School of Architecture and Design, including the new Anderson Design Center interior design, landscape architecture, architecture finally together in one place, starting to see the kind of work that happens in the other disciplines, being able to, to sit in on reviews and, and see the work that's being produced is, is pretty exciting. It's great that the students have this space and we are all sort of very appreciative. The University of Arkansas took the initiative to create this space for these students. To me, it means the university is not slowing down. They're really trying to speed up how the university functions. If, whenever I see construction, I just see the positive future. It's something very promising to the future of the university. Champions Hall is the newest addition. 62,000 square feet of cutting edge space for classes, labs, and study groups built at a cost of $26.5 million. Thousands of students will take math and biology courses here. Champions Hall takes its name from funding support provided by the University of Arkansas Athletics Department, which committed a share of annual Southeastern Conference revenues to the project. The success of Razorback Athletics and the prestige of the SEC are making a direct impact on the success of all University of Arkansas students. The new Jerry and Jean Jones Family Student Athlete Success Center is the envy of the SEC and extensive renovations are in the works for the home of the Razorbacks, a project that will create a new north end zone section, expanding capacity to 76,000 at Donald W. Reynolds Razorback Stadium. Well, the new end zone project does many things for our program. It certainly allows us to create a better home field advantage. 
having more fans in the stands cheering loudly and blocking that sound in in the north end zone will really help us even more have that great home field advantage here at Razorback Stadium. Long is equally excited about the academic success of Razorback student athletes who continue to set new records in the classroom. The university's proven track record of academic excellence is a big draw for students. Arkansas is number one in the SEC for Goldwater and Truman Scholars. The ability of our students to uh, win these scholarships is noted uh, nationally. And so when people are applying to the university and we're looking at universities that they might attend, this is one that they'll take a look at because they too might have a chance of getting one of these scholarships. What we say with confidence is that a student who comes here as an undergraduate will be prepared to engage actively and productively in a graduate program anywhere in the world. You'll have opportunities to enter programs uh, that you may not normally get accepted to uh, because it's sort of the equalizing bar. It just shows the level of support that's available at this university, both from the research and scientific side, while at the same time having the administrative support and the, the knowledge and really experience for guiding through really um, competitive fellowships in the world. Arkansas meets a very important need for scholarship programs. They want regional distribution, national distribution. We get to tell them about the motivation of the student, the aptitude of the student, the work ethic of the student where we think they have the ability to go. I mean, he wasn't the Goldwater Scholar when he first came and working with me. And so we really encourage our students to apply, and they've been hugely successful. Another reason promising students choose to join the Razorback family is because of the broad choices the university offers. Kanisha Day blended art and science to come up with an educational experience that nourished her ability to think critically and create artistically. I kind of get the best of both worlds. I get the science, and I know how it works, but then I get the mind, and I know how people feel, and if chemistry is cold, hard facts, then drama is like a release from that. Exploring the mind, exploring emotions, exploring the human experience. Kanisha says she's more likely to play the role of a pharmacist in the future, and she's gaining valuable experience assisting with research that could lead to a new drug to treat Parkinson's and other nerve-related diseases. The project is the total synthesis of antascomycin B. It's a fairly complex molecule, and it requires a team of people to work on it. What Kanisha is doing is some of the initial reactions, and she's trying to figure out how we get a higher yield of this compound. If you're making a drug, you need a lot of the compound. So it's very important that we take that molecule and recreate it. Part of the university experience is to broaden you, and that's why students take classes in a whole variety of different disciplines, no matter what their major might be. The fact that the University of Arkansas gives me the opportunity to major in what I love and also minor in what I love, I wouldn't trade that for anything. I truly love it. I'm passionate about it, and it's important that people find their passions so that they will be motivated, and I'm grateful that I found mine. Food is usually high on the list of priorities for college students. At the University of Arkansas, hospitality management students are getting career experience while feeding the campus through a one-of-a-kind collaboration known as the Innovation Cafe. We had to come up with a whole aspect of the entire restaurant. My group did a great concept, which it's so hands-on and it gets me really involved in my field. And I just, I didn't think that it was possible to have this kind of experience before getting out of school. Working with Chartwells, we, we came up with the idea of this innovation cafe. So this allow our students to have real world learning associated with uh, developing a restaurant concept, uh, implementing that concept. For the university to be able to say, hey, we offer a real life experience, you get to develop a concept, you get to see it through, see how it works, and have the possibility of the largest food service company in the world launching their um, concept is pretty exciting. There's a lot of phases that go into the restaurant. It's pretty intense. You need to make sure you have an actual concept, an idea. From there, we started developing the idea, developing menu items. When you see a restaurant, the main focus is food, but you don't see every tiny little aspect. And it's really cool just to be able to see everything come together. The, the idea is that concept 
will probably turn over about every 18 months, and then it'll be changed to a new concept. So the students will be involved in coming up with what should go in there next. It's actually a really cool thing to have my ideas involved and to have uh, students be able to have something that I've helped create. And of course, there are students who come here because they never want to stop learning. Meet Elizabeth Reagan, a 93-year-old great-grandmother who's truly in a class of her own after taking courses at the University of Arkansas for the last 45 years. Just one of her many passions. I would perish if I couldn't go ice skating. I am 93 years old. She grew up in Minnesota where she loved to ice skate. I have 13 living children. 16 grandchildren and some great-grands. She's my grandmother. She's 93 years old. She's been taking classes here since, I think, the 70s. I take classes two semesters a year, but I've done that since Paul came back from Vietnam, and that was 71. And I was taking courses from Ben Kimple. I was telling mother about him and said, you'd really enjoy sitting in on these classes. And she came with me one time and then she started on her own and kept going to his classes. She loved his classes and then she started taking them from other people in the English department. I just love English. I could just take it all the time. Maybe it's knowledge, maybe it's wisdom, maybe it's just the experience. I just wanted to do that after I had done this other thing of raising all the kids. Both boys say that they see mom, whom we call Granny, uh, going across campus now and again, and they'll stop and chat with her. And I just do it because it's, it's a strong something in me that says, let's do it. I don't think there's any secret. What do you do in the morning? I get up and go. What is it that makes this place so special? Is it the inviting nature of the people and place? The natural beauty, tradition, and spirit? It's all of that, isn't it? A place where we discover what's possible, where we're inspired and prepared for what's next. It's special because it's a part of my past, present, and future. It's a part of me, a path I share with those before and after. There are many notable graduates of the University of Arkansas, including J. William Fulbright, a former U.S. Senator and President of the University who created the Fulbright Scholarship Program the largest international exchange of scholars in the world. Walmart CEO Doug McMillan, the former number one women's golfer in the world, Stacey Lewis, and the owner of the Dallas Cowboys, Jerry Jones, just to name a few. Some alums have two jobs, like James Smith, who works for the Federal Reserve Bank during the week before his more glamorous weekend gig kicks off. A lot of what I do is crunching numbers. I deal with a lot of problem banks, identifying problem banks. It's very quiet and buttoned down and no nonsense there pretty much. I work for the athletic department all through college. I would take photography and, and shoot all the games of all the different sports. Eddie Sutton was the coach then and, and U.S. Reed hit a half court shot in the playoffs one year against Louisville. Three seconds, Reed trying to dribble, two seconds, five seconds, long shot, come on, come on! And I got that shot. I started shooting the Cowboys in 87 when I moved to Dallas. A typical game day here in Dallas, I would get to the stadium about three hours before the game. I take some cameras and put up around the stadium as a remote camera. I start with pictures in the locker room as the players arrive and get dressed. We shoot the cheerleaders. We shoot fans arriving, we shoot any aspect of the game. I might end up shooting in a game like that, 4,000 pitchers during the day. We shoot a lot of stuff to get a good shot. We clocked it with a pedometer one time, and I traveled about 11 miles during a game. Favorite shot would be a few years ago at a game at Philadelphia. Our tight end, Jason Whitten, got hit, and they knocked his helmet off. And that's probably my favorite shot. I don't have a stopping date in mind, so I'll, I'll continue to go as long as they'll let me. Another Razorback travels the globe in search of the best stories as a video producer for National Geographic. When you tell people that you work for National Geographic, they always have a memory that's connected with that yellow border or a specific 
image they saw or something, and that's always been really special. I've always been drawn to people stories, uh, stories about you know the human experience. The two stories that I did for the Hunger in America series were probably two of the toughest stories that I've ever, ever done. I did one about a family in rural Iowa struggling to feed their three children. And then the second story I did for that was here in Arkansas in Fort Smith, working with some people in a community where the elderly have high rates of food insecurity. The mother in the Iowa story is the same age as me. And it was one of those moments that really kind of puts into perspective where I am and where she is and the things that she's facing in her life every day that I couldn't even imagine facing. They were really important stories to tell and I was really just felt honored to get to tell them. I was drawn to journalism from an early age. She was just curious, she just wanted to know. And I think that a lot of that had to do with growing up in a small town, just not knowing everything and just wondering what's out there and, and just having this amazing curiosity about the world. There were a lot of steps in between Flip and Arkansas and National Geographic, but finding stories that you really love and that you feel really passionate about has always been that driving force behind what I do. Former Razorback All-American John Register was training for the 1996 Olympics when a freak accident changed his life forever. He not only recovered, but reinvented himself, using his experience to inspire others. When I lost the leg or had the realization of, of losing the limb, what was going on in my mind were a lot of things. First of all, my identity. Who was I now? My wife saw me struggling with that question uh, and said, you know what, John? We are going to get through this together. It's just our new normal. So I had to create my new normal. I began swimming for physical therapy, and 18 months after losing my limb, I found myself as a member of the Paralympic team uh, swimming at those games. Register went on to set an American record in the long jump at the 2000 Paralympic Games. As he began to realize how he dealt with his setback inspired others. My dream became helping others attain their dream because each one of us has our hurdles that we are, we're gonna be dealing with. And how we hurdle those adversities is actually a process by which we get through life's challenges. And we noticed that alumni, um, prominent alumni who came back to campus mostly interacted with administration. So we wanted to provide a program where they interact with students. And so that's how the Johnson Fellowship came about. Yeah, it was cool to see that he did go to school here and how much he like loved the Razorbacks. He was able to articulate how he was able to overcome that adversity. It inspired a lot of people to work harder and to not give up. That's what it's really all about. So I'm honored to be to have been asked to come back as, as, as the fifth Johnson Fellow. Recent University of Arkansas graduates are making vital contributions to our nation's heritage, including winning an international competition to design the new World War I memorial in Washington, D.C. I found out I won actually from the Chicago Tribune. They called me and said, congratulations. I said, on what? Winning the competition at age 25 is really significant. It allowed him to look upon this competition with uh, new eyes, uh, to look upon it uh, in a certain, with a certain degree of freedom, uh, with a deep sense of responsibility. The title of the design submission was The Weight of Sacrifice. Having a memorial that you can go up and touch that tactile sensory experience really gets people to reconnect and create a memory of their own. On the walls, what you'll see are quotations from soldiers and politicians about how they saw themselves, how they saw the country before and after the war. The design that, that uh, Joe did for this memorial is fascinating and how it's a site that unites rather than uh, divides the place. It functions both as a memorial and as a park. It is architectural, it's artistic, it is landscape architectural, it's urban design. Well, my experience at the University of Arkansas really helped shape and ground this project and in a lot of ways I couldn't have done it without my experiences here. The University of Arkansas has an amazing, and Fayetteville has an amazing tradition of architects, Edward Durrell Stone and Faye Jones. I'm happy to be part of that, especially as another Fayetteville native who can contribute.
Even the sidewalks at the University of Arkansas are designed with more than one purpose. With the names of all U of A graduates who leave their mark here and everywhere.